All right, good afternoon and welcome everybody. Uh, this is going to be a how to get started in the game. It's a little bit uh, complicated. The learning curve is pretty big for this game. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. First of all, you're going to pick a server. And generally, you're going to want to pick a low ping server or um, depending on what kind of gameplay you want to have. Off the start, you're going to load in. You're going to start in what is called a CQM. That stands for Quarters Module. This is my CQM. This is essentially a little uh, captain's cabin type of thing. Um, and you're going to start coming out of your cryopod immediately uh, in this little area. And, you know, you got your cup here. This goes to uh, a coffee machine, which is found sometimes. You got your med pack. You go out the doors. And um, you got some canisters here. These canisters will give you oxygen and nitrogen. We'll get them here. Got oxygen and nitro in it. Not nitrogen, just nitro. Nitro is what... Um, fills up your jetpack. So if you can see these bars on this jetpack here, there's um, nitro, oxygen, and a jetpack charge. Get a little bit clearer. It's an F on there for fuel. So first thing, for, thing for, wow. First things first, you're gonna grab your suit, put it all on, put it on. Uh, you're gonna wanna open your mask immediately by pressing H. Um, and that way you can uh, not burn through a lot of your fuel and such. And now that you have a suit, you're gonna go ahead and go in through the door. This is called a lifeboat or a station. By pressing J, you can turn your jetpack on. You can kind of fool around with the zero G mechanics here. Um, it takes quite a while to get used to them for some people. Um, it's a little bit, uh, I guess, not intuitive. It's all Newtonian physics in this game, minus a few uh, gameplay things. So I'm getting used to. RCSing around is not uh, not the easiest for some people, but um, what you're going to want to do right away is go ahead and turn on your artificial gravity. It'll make things easier. It'll make you uh, able to walk around and all that. Um, and of course, you're going to have your two other cryopods here. Um, something I'll probably go over in a separate video is changing cryopods, but uh, as you can see, these both say locked. Um, this means that they are not your primary cryopod. They're simply locked out from other players using them. If you want to change and make one of these cryopods your cryopod, you simply unlock it and then hit assign and see how it says authorized now. Whichever cryopod in the universe says authorized, that is the one you will respawn in. This one is locked. I will not respawn in that one. This one is authorized. I'll respawn in that one. My CQM, I'll no longer respawn in there. Um, so off the bat, you're going to want to turn on your power. These are solar panels. These basically give you a certain amount of power output. They will give you exactly 411 power output here, um, given that I'm going to have 41% efficiency because we're relatively far. The starter planet is Bethir, and it's relatively far from the sun. You're also going to want to turn on your capacitor. Uh, what this does is it stores excess energy. So currently, I'm not using um, more energy than I'm consuming. And there are some bugs with consumption that doesn't always show how much you're consuming. But currently, I'm, I'm using uh, just over 300 more than I'm consuming. So it's going to start. Um, storing all the extra energy in there for if I ever, you know, dip behind the the planet itself and have no sun coverage or something, um, and have no no physical power coming out. Um, next, you're going to want to turn on your air. Uh, of course, this is important. You have a bunch of different parts here. Air filters are important. Air generators are important. And uh, what you're going to want to consider doing when you're offline is turning everything off. Power, air, everything. You're going to want to turn that off because it'll stay pressurized in here. You have this nice little board right here. Um, this will show you your pressure, which is one. Um, that's good. Air quality, 98%, also good. Um, it'll stay like this unless you open a door to outer space. Um, but what you want to do when you're logged out, if you can, is go into your cryopod. And you just hit F on the glass part of the cryopod to get into it. You, uh, you sit in this nice little, uh, little cryopod. You can't die in here uh, unless somebody shoots you. But I'm not even sure you can shoot through a cryopod. So. Effectively, you're safe in here. Um, that said, pirates can uh, still come and uh, take all your stuff and you know drain your oxygen, but at least you are safe in there for now. Um, yeah, so after uh, after going ahead and turning on the power and everything, you're probably going to want to fill up your jetpack. And I usually fill up both of these jetpacks because they both start empty. Or not empty, but you know partially empty. And this one starts full. So you can just grab the full one if you don't want to do this. But if you're willing to take the time, uh, it's always valuable to take a little bit extra time, and um, this is the cargo interaction panel. How you reload your jetpacks. This is how you refine raw resources. So as you can see, there's some raw resources in your lifeboat at the start. 
can switch over to this tab and you have some refined ref resources. Um, I usually like to take to refill um, jet packs and such. I usually take from the refined side. Uh, so I'm not tapping into my actual lifeboat's uh, resources. And so this is now full 10 out of 10. You just simply drag it over to refill it and then hit confirm. And then you re you're refilling your uh, jet packs and such that way. Um, these other um, tabs I'll go over in other videos and such. So right now I'm just going to refill these. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of these back on the shelf. And this is tab to open this screen. Go ahead and throw this bad boy back on here. Uh, you can grab, sometimes there's a stim pack that spawns here. You can grab that if you want. Um, but at this point, we've got everything under control. Our jetpack is full. And we're going to go outside. So you're going to open this door. And then you're going to go into zero G here. You're going to want to press J to turn on your jetpack before you open this door. And you're going to want to press H because outside of this door is outer space. So when you open it, you're going to be in outer space. You're going to have no air quality and all that. Um, this door you want to make sure is closed. Always have this door closed before you open the outside door or else you're going to vent all of your oxygen and such into outer space. So go ahead, you're going to want to hold shift if you can see in the bottom right corner of my screen. The little RCS stabilization thing is popping on and off. That's me hitting shift over and over. And I'm going to get sticky keys for doing that. Um, but anyway, when you're holding shift, uh, it means you're holding onto a wall or something close to you. It'll also stop you from spinning around in zero G, which I will demonstrate in a second. So you're going to want to hold shift so you don't go flying out. This way you're holding onto the wall uh, and you're not going to get flung into space. Go ahead and hit F to open the door. It's going to suck in all the uh, suck all the oxygen into outer space, and then you're good to go. All right, we're in zero G now. Directly in front of us is an airlock, and over there is, in der is a derelict. I would recommend probably going to the airlock first. Um, so as you can see, I'm spinning right now. And if I hold shift in a second, I'm going to get spinning better. All right, so now I'm going to hold shift. It's going to stop me from spinning. This will always stop your, uh, your camera from spinning around and such, and, as well as holding onto walls. So I'm going to fly over here. This is on top of the airlock. This is called an RCS panel, uh, a docking panel, anyway. And this is um, the RCS utility access. Right now, the starter modules all start with a resource injector in them. But new modules, whenever you bring a new module to dock it to your station, you will need to have a resource injector handy because they won't have this in them and you won't be able to move them at all. They might be full nitro, um, but you won't be able to move it without the resource injector. So you're going to go ahead and open this panel to the docking panel. R will switch your ports, which ports you want to dock to it. Um, and if I, all right, well, your left and right arrow keys will swap, um, well, your all of your arrow keys will swap stuff. Up and down will swap what you're selecting to dock to. Um, left and right will switch which port you're docking to, which uh, I can't demonstrate right now because there's only one port to dock to on the outpost itself. So anyway, um, you can decide which port you want. However, it's good to know that this side is the airlock docking port, and an airlock can only dock to other airlocks, for future reference. Airlocks can only dock to airlocks, and standard doors can only dock to standard doors. And the difference between an airlock door and a standard door is just uh, basically that it has an airlock panel on the side. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind for the entirety of your time playing this game is that you can never dock an airlock to a standard door. It has to be a standard door to a standard door. All right, so you're using WASD um, to your directions. A, or sorry, W and S will be forward and backwards. A and D are side to side. Q and E will spin us. So if I press Q or hold it down for a second, we're going to start spinning around. Um, e will spin us the other direction, of course. And um, there's a lot of things that are coming at you on the screen. Again, shift will stop you from spinning. So I'm back right here. Even this little green bar at the top, as you can see, if we're lined up with the door, it'll be green or non-existent. If it's red, it means you are not lined up uh, right away. Um, so this is important to watch. Um, but it will also change depending on the direction you're coming in. Then, of course, you have these little nice little red bars on the side there. You can see that one back and forth. This is your horizontal velocity in comparison to the uh, whatever you're trying to dock to, the door, uh, essentially. And um, this is how you, you move these around. Um, if they're going up or down, you want to kind of level them out so that you're aimed at the door. 
pretty well, and you're lined up with it uh, as far as the outer green circle is. Um, so that looks pretty good. Uh, we're not moving vertically or horizontally really right now, and we're aimed directly at it. We're not at an angle or tilted or anything, so we're in good shape here. Um, and then you have uh, your RCS fuel level in the bottom left, which is important. Uh, if you have less than 10, you're going to have to dock real quick, or you're going to probably run out really fast. Um, and then, of course, below, or well, next to that, uh, in the bottom middle, it says your distance. So I'm 22.7 meters away, and this is important to watch. Uh, and below that is your directional velocity. So if I move forward, I'm now moving towards this at 0.6 meters per second. And I am obviously getting closer. Um, if you move backwards, it'll go backwards. Um, and if it's green, it means you're, you know, within one meter per second, essentially. And uh, the further away you go, um, the, the, the darker the color, I guess, it'll get. It'll turn red once you're outside of five to let you know that you're going, you're really going a, a different speed than that one, than whatever you're docking to. And orange is just saying you should kind of be aware of the fact that you're moving away from it pretty fast as well. Uh, so right now it's 0.8. I'm about 61 meters away, so I'm actually going to speed up here. Um, I would recommend never, when you're within 20 meters, never going faster than 0.7 if you're new to this. And when you're within 10 meters, never go faster than 0.5. Um, as you get better at this, you'll know, you'll learn um, more about what the speeds are that you can go and all that. Um, so we're at about 27, 26 meters away, 24 meters away. We're getting closer. Um, it's green, so it's saying, you know, we're not going way too fast. And there's a little bit of a green bar at the top saying I'm a little bit off angle, which is fine. If, as long as it's not red, you're within an angle that you can dock to uh, the door and not have issues. Um, so right now we're within 10 meters, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. And as we approach, I'm just going to do some final uh, little measurements and get lined up a little bit better. Never hold your keys down with, when you're within 10 meters. The more you hold your key down, you're going to go flying off in different directions. Um, and you see this a lot of people trying to match their uh, their speeds and overcompensating a ton. Even I overcompensate a ton when I'm docking. Um, so anyway, two meters away. And once you're within two meters, uh, it'll go ahead and dock it for you. And that's nice and easy. Now you've got an airlock on your station. I'm going to go ahead and look at it. And as I was saying before, this door is an airlock door. So this door can only be locked uh, or docked to another airlock. Whereas the other side doesn't have this little panel, this airlock panel. So it's a standard door. And standard doors, of course, can only be docked to standard doors. Um, sometimes there's stuff in there. You can go check that out if you want. First, of course, to uh, depressurize this, you're going to need to hit um, depressurize. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it fully pressurized because um, I there we go. Um, because I'm going to probably dock my ship to it in a little bit. All right, now that you've taken care of the airlock and docking that to your station, you're going to head over to this bad boy. This is a derelict. You'll find these all over the solar system, across every single planet and every single moon. Uh, the only place I think they don't spawn is in the middle of deep space and right next to the sun. <laughs> um, so we're going to head over to this. Um, just kind of take it slow as you're getting used to the um, to the um, zero g movement and all that. And I'm pretty uh, pretty well used to it, so it's not particularly uh, particularly difficult for me. But of course, you're probably going to have a lot more issues as you first begin in this game. You're going to find some stuff here. You'll find some ammo for your gun. Go ahead and pick that up. You'll find these cans, more of these little tiny cans with resources in them. Um, Always check up here, there's a nice uh, a crowbar and a battery and all that. This is good stuff right here. Um, and then you're going to come over here, and up here. Go ahead and jump down, and open this little uh, this thing. There's usually cans in here and such, yeah. More cans. I have uh, currently the maximum number of cans that I can hold. I'll show you this in a second. Get up against this wall right here. All right. So right now I have a stim pack and three cans. And I'm four out of four, so I can no longer hold any more of these in my backpack. So now I have to hold it in my hand because I don't have any more. And uh, this is your inventory area. You have uh, ammo, six slots in the standard suit. And uh, this is for general stuff like warp cells, batteries, different parts of the ship, etc. And these are tools and weapons. You can hold extra jetpacks and helmets and, and, and the like. And then one and two slots are for weapons. Um, 
So anybody, anyway, you're gonna you're gonna want to come down here, grab grab everything you can find in here, pretty much. Um, usually, most of the stuff spawns in that spot where I just was at, and then sometimes there's stuff over in this area. Uh, I have never found anything over here, in this area. If you want to check it, go for it. You never know. Um, but I have never seen anything spawn over there in a derelict. Uh, now that you've got everything from the derelict, you're gonna head out. We are gonna go over to our ship now. So if you hit X. You can find it on your radar, and as you can see, there's a little uh, a thing, a little line on the bottom that shows you if you are are facing the direction of whatever you have selected. So after you hit X to open up your radar, it's the arrow key to decide what you want to select to go towards. Um, and this is really useful, especially when you're outside of your ship and you're trying to find your ship, or you're outside of your ship and you're kind of disoriented and looking for the outpost or something. Um, the little circle. Uh, at the bottom, when your uh, little targeting icon is inside that circle, you know you're heading towards it, even if it's out of vision, um, out of your field of view. You'll still know that you're actually heading in the direct, of, direct direction of that, whatever you're looking to go to. So here's our ship here, your uh, ACARG HE1. And uh, currently, it is the 1st of July in, um, in GMT time. So, your outpost, your ship, your airlock, and your derelict will all have the same designation, 01H001. Uh, the 01 is the day of the month. H is the month converted into a letter of the alphabet, um, i.e., um, what is it, August? August being the, all right, we're not even going to do that. But anyway, it's the 1st of August, not the 1st of July, sorry. Um, the 1st of August, so it's 01 then the number of the month, so August, converted into a uh, letter of the alphabet. Um, August being the eighth month of the year, it converts to H. And I am the first person to spawn this ship on this server, so 001. And that will count all the way up for every ship outpost and everything that spawns, every new person that spawns an outpost. Um, so the next person to spawn an outpost will have outpost uh, 01H002. And tomorrow will be 02H001. It'll start over from 1, of course. And yesterday, being the 31st of July, was 31G and the number designation. Anyway, that's just a little fun fact. That's not actually that important. But you can tell how long ago things were spawned uh, based on the number designation to them. All right. You got your ship. You're going to come over to the top of it. It has an airlock on it. And you can actually access it if you're holding something in your hand. So you're going to just kind of throw this uh, right in front of you for a second. Go ahead and enter the panel by hitting F, and then this is your airlock. You're going to want to depressurize it. You want this to be zero so it's matched with the outside. So as it's depressurizing, you're going to want to grab your uh, container back. Wait for it to depressurize it. When it's at zero, you can open the door. Um, you're also going to want to wait for this blue bar to disappear. Uh, that will signify that the air quality as well is zero, so you won't be leaking any nitrogen or oxygen um, when you open the door. Kind of sit here and wait, maybe look at the view. The nice, uh, nice giant purple planet of Beth here that you spawn near. Very beautiful over there. About to sneak behind it, that's the moon of Burner. Over here we have the moon of Broken Marble. And Everest Station, I think, is going to hide for this moment, but that's fine. All right, your ship is now at 0, 0.0 bars or pressure. I'm going to go ahead and open the door. You can also open the door from the airlock panel, but seeing as I have something in my hand, I don't want to drop it again until now. Of course, you're going to have to drop it now that you're inside, so I'm going to get up against the wall. I'm going to hold shift so I stop moving, and I'm going to throw this bad boy over there. Have it float around for a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit this button to close the outer door. If it's green, the door's open. If it's red, the door's closed. You can only pressurize the airlock when the doors are both closed. So I'm going to hit repressurize. Tank is going to empty. And the pressure is going to go back up. Go ahead and grab this bad boy again. We're going to go ahead and orient ourselves. You don't have to do this, but it's easier to orient yourself with the sign. Uh, this way you're going straight up and down when you go into your ship. And so if you're not straight up and down, you're going to flop onto the ground. Uh, once this little bar, um, I'll show you this later in another video probably, but this once this is no longer red, you can open your mask because the air quality is fine to breathe. Um, 
and the pressure is good enough that you can breathe. Usually it's around 0.4, but if your air quality is like 40% or something, it won't let you open your mask until maybe 0.7 or something like that. Anyway, you're at 1.0 pressure. Good air quality. You can now press this button. This will open the door below me. And this will let you enter your ship. So, um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but control goes down and spacebar goes up. Spacebar going up, control going down. You're going to want to go straight down. You're going to hop into your ship. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this. Um, that is to go down to the cargo bay, this little panel here. Um, but this is what happens, and I'm sure many of you will fi find this out very quickly. If you are not oriented directly up and down, and you just go through this door, you're going to flop, and I believe you take a small amount of damage uh, when you fall. Not a lot, not significant, doesn't really matter. Um, if you're lazy, you can just not orient yourself and it's fine. Alright, so, welcome to the ship. This is uh, our beautiful mule, as I believe they are called in um, the lore. It'll give you a gun, nice suit. Uh, jetpack that's a little empty and a helmet um, and all of the parts that you start with are fully functioning uh, most of the time they will stay that way but first off you're gonna run over to this panel you're gonna want to turn on your fusion reactor you're gonna want to turn on your capacitor and you're gonna want to turn on both of your solar panels now that said if you're docked to a station you don't want to have FTL on because it will drain all of the power in your state uh, very quickly um, and it doesn't show on the consumption panel usually when you're there uh, the fusion reactor itself will output 5,000 units of power. Uh, I don't really know what unit that would be, but um, your ship will start charging up now. And it's important to note that before you FTL, you have to have your fusion reactor online, or you have to have a full capacity on your power. If you FTL with your... FTL, uh, by the way, means faster than light. It's the uh, form of warping in this game. Um, if you FTL and your fusion reactor is offline and your capacity is at 10,000 out of 10,000 or something, you will drain your capacity incredibly quickly, and then you will be at zero, and it will cut you out of FTL or not let you FTL again. Um, this fusion reactor, it runs off of a uh, refined resource called deuterium, and also requires um, parts that are functioning. And you will start with 40 deuterium. It will not go through it fast. Uh, right now, in fact, um, Maybe seeing as I'm outputting 411 and I'm consuming 160 because I have the fusion reactor online, um, it will maybe go through one every couple hours or something like that. If I turn the fusion reactor off, um, I I will be using significantly less power, um, and so uh, then I won't be using deuterium and I will be fine. But seeing as I want to warp, I need my fusion reactor on um, going into FTL. Um, you can check your life support on the ship. It should already be turned on for you. It should be good. You'll have oxygen and nitrogen set to go. Um, of course, these drain over time. Uh, so you do want to be careful. There's a couple ways to get resources. You can either go mining, um, which takes time and is uh, mildly, you know, not difficult, but it's time consuming. You need a lot of drills and stuff, which we'll see in a second. Um, or you can steal resources from other players, as I'm sure some of you have seen videos of people pirating. Um, it's quite a common way to get resources, is uh, just dock your ship up to their station and then transfer them all into your ship. And that is uh, another way to um, acquire resources. But anyway, you're going to come over here. This is your security terminal. You're going to want to claim your ship. Um, this is pretty important, especially if you're ever planning to put a turret in your ship, you need to have it claimed. Um, and this will also allow you to lock the doors. Uh, so I'm now the commanding officer. You can change the vessel name if you want. I don't know. I'm not going to change it right now. But you can change it to pretty much whatever you want. Uh, it will still have this original designation, um, but it will have a different name when it's seen on the nav map. Um, and of course, you can also add people to your crew, um, different people that are online or whatever. Um, and you can resign from being captain if you want, so you can put somebody else as a commanding officer, or if you're just leaving the ship somewhere or whatever, and you're not going to use it anymore, you could always uh, unclaim it for somebody else to use if you're feeling like being kind, but I'm going to go ahead and claim it right now. Um, if you're ever looking to meet up with another player, other than inviting them, you can, of course, uh, open this little box here and uh, send out a distress call. Uh, important to note that everyone on the server can see this distress call. So if you're inviting a friend, you probably don't want to leave it on because uh, you may have some unwanted visitors with um, weapons. You hop down this little hole here. 
Uh, this is your warp drive. There's uh, something in there called a singularity cell detonator. Um, you need this as well as warp cells to jump. Um, I'm not going to take anything from this. Uh, so just for future reference, that's good to know. Um, we'll hop down to the cargo bay real fast. Take a look. I'm going to go ahead and grab this resource. And as of patch 0.2, um, they've added quite a few shelves uh, and such down here, which are very nice to you. Hopefully they'll be adding more uh, and more functionality for the shelves as we get uh, further into the game. Uh, but you can go ahead and put resource canisters on these shelves. You can put um, small stim packs on the shelves. And the little shelves hold those sorts of things. The big shelves hold things like drills. So let me grab this drill real quick. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put this on the big shelf. Those hold uh, the drills. Um, and the little ones will hold resource canisters, small stim packs, batteries, cups, uh, your coffee cup, and all that sorts of stuff. Uh, hacking tools, etc. Big ones hold drills. They don't hold guns, unfortunately. Uh, oh, I don't have a gun with me. None of these shelves actually hold the gun or the um, crowbar, so you can just kind of throw it on the ground. Sometimes those will phase through the floor. Um, every once in a while it happens. The medium shelves, so not these little shelves, but these medium shelves, will hold canisters, um, they'll hold jetpacks, helmets, suits, everything. Um, well, not everything, but you know, uh, a lot of that sort of stuff, the medium sized stuff. Um, so let's grab this back, go ahead and put this on the shelf, and I'll go ahead and put these on the rest of these shelves. And what else do I have? Oh, a battery. I guess I'll put that in the shelf. Uh, most people will put, just for the sake of OCD, um, you can put all of your batteries on this little wall area right here. Um, and this is a charging station, so if you're going to charge your jetpack or whatever, um, charging the jetpack, so for example, uh, your jetpack has a light, it's the L button. Uh, kind of hard to see. I'll turn it off and back on. Uh, the only thing I believe that the power of the jetpack does is um, power up the light. I don't think it actually matters for your oxygen or fuel consumption at all. I believe you can still breathe and use RCS fine. Um, so as you can see, my power is starting to go down. It's at 99%. It's because I have my light on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And then after a second, it'll be back to 100. Sorry. That back up already. Uh, over here, you have your refueling station. Um, you cannot put orange canisters in here. You can only put blue canisters. So, for example, this blue canister is holding uh, 29 units of nitro. So I grab it, I hold it, drag it into my inventory. Uh, my current RCS propellant, if you can find it on there, is right here. 600 out of 1,000. Um, you can put any type of refined resource into here. So you can put hydrogen, which is engine fuel. Ethereum, which powers your en or which powers your uh, generator. Nitrogen, which is used for, I believe, pressure and to help um, create breathable atmosphere in the ship. And of course, oxygen uh, for your life support tank. And then of course, this is nitro, which is different from nitrogen. Nitro is what you use for everything. So if you just go ahead and bring this up to here, press F, it'll load that up. Now there's 629 instead of 100 out of 1,000. Now I have some more RCS, uh, more nitro in there. Go ahead and put this back on the shelf. Um, my suit should be fully charged now. Yep, back to 100. Um, and you need to go to your station. So if you go mining, you're going to put the orange canisters in, in the drill. And you're going to go mine with that. Then you'll put the orange canister into your station, which is your lifeboat, which is that thing over there. You'll put that in there. And you'll unload the raw resource. You'll refine it in there. And then you can load it into a blue can and load it into your ship. Um, also important to note, if your ship is, let's say, grappled to the station or, or airlocked to the station, you can simply load it into the ship, all of your regular resources, your refined resources, from the lifeboat into the ship uh, from the cargo panel in the lifeboat. Uh, so basically, you can just load it all without using the canisters at all, which is pretty nice. Um, using the ship, um, of course, your mouse will move around your directions. Uh, going forward, backward, and side to side are the same as um, as with the jetpack. Uh, w, A, S, D, uh, Q, and E will, of course, roll you. And spacebar will be up, control button will be down. Uh, and of course, shift will stabilize your view, albeit a little bit slower than with, uh, with your jetpack. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to move away from my station a little bit. And we are going to go ahead and FTL somewhere. So 
start up in this direction so we're not close to the station. Of course, right now my FTL is offline. So we're going to go ahead and do this button here. will turn my FTL online. It's now yellow, which means it's charging up. And after a moment, it will be fully charged. Um, I recommend leaving engines offline as it will simply drain your power. Um, engines are going to be changed next patch, so I'm not going to go over them. Uh, they're going to be changed completely in 0 0.2.3. So if you hit your nav, let me get back over here. If you hit this nav button, it'll open this screen. Docking button will open docking screen and allow you to dock to things. Headlight, I'm not even sure if that still does anything. I think your lights are automatically online. Uh, and scan, I believe, is used for scanning asteroids, um, as well as scanning your So this is your nav map. The right mouse button will drag your screen around and allow you to reorient your camera. The left mouse button will physically move when you hold it down where you're going. Hold it down, you can move backward, etc. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on my ship. Uh, or I suppose I can click on Bethier. If you click on Bethier, it'll bring you to uh, Bethier screen. As you can see, there's plenty of outposts and public areas that have distress signals on. What happens when you turn on your distress signal? It will appear on the nav map of everyone with an exclamation point next to it. Scroll button zooms in and out. Um, as you can see, here's Burner. Here's Broken Marble. Here's Everest Station. These are the three moons of Bethier. They all have uh, different types of things. I will go ahead and first off warp to, let's go to this emergency supply post. So you're gonna left click it, and then it will be selected down here, emergency supply post B1. You're gonna hit the warp to button, and then welcome to your FTL faster than light screen. So here we have warp one, warp two, and warp three. As they have it designed at this moment, warp one is used traveling around a planet. Warp 2 is used to travel between moons and planet. Um, and warp 3 is used to between planets. So the current planet that I'm at is Bethier, which is right here. If I was going to say, um, I forget what the, Iridil, I believe, is the main planet here. Um, or any of the moons, of course, of this area, or any of these you know, planets or moons, Hirath. Um, I would use warp three to come over to them. And it takes uh, about 14 to 25 minutes, depending on where you're going and where you are in location in the universe to get to it. Um, and yeah, so anyway, we're gonna go back to Bethier here. And we are going to continue, not to Broken Marble, Bethier. You're selecting this, warp two. Over here, you have your time. So the activation time, is this little blue icon here. Activation time. And on, no, I can't. Here, there we go. Nope, I don't want to click. There we go, OK. So this is your activation time. Notice how it's not where my ship is. Your ship will be orange, where it currently is. It will, it will show on your nav map. And if you hit my ship, it'll take you to it. Uh, home station, of course, will take you to whatever um, facility has your cryopod in it at the time that is your that as your respawn. And there's another way to make sure that you change cryopods um, is to hit home station. And anyway, your activation time. This blue little icon right here. It is not where my ship is right now. My ship is currently in orbit around Bethier, which means I am constantly moving around Bethier. And so activation time is one minute and five seconds. That is one minute and five seconds, this little icon, from where I am at this moment. And as you can see, it's ticking down because I'm getting closer and closer to this. 55 seconds from where I am right now, I will activate FTL. That's what your activation time is. Your arrival time is this little gray ship right here. This will be your arrival time to the emergency supply post or wherever you're trying to warp. Um, currently, it passed. Um, so this is constantly, of course, moving as well. So let's go ahead and set this to one minute or something. This is one minute from being, one minute and 26 seconds from being at this point. And I am 24 seconds from being at this point. So essentially, your goal is to create a straight line, not going, of course, through a planet, because you will die if you FTL through a planet. Um, and creating a straight line that goes between your current location and the outpost that you're going to. Um, so if I, I'm going to add some time here, my activation time. It says course impossible right now, this is because my activation time is larger than my arrival time which of course is not possible. It will take me one minute to get to this blue point. 
but if I'm activating or if I'm having my arrival time be 50 seconds from now, of course, I will be here, you know, 50 seconds from now. So I can't be there. That makes it, of course, impossible. If you add a minute to this, because your acceleration is too high. This is saying that you need to take time. Oh, sorry. Apparently, I'm at 50 minutes instead of, uh, of one minute. I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way down. Uh, essentially, it did that because this bar ticked to zero. Uh, because this passed where I was intending to arrive at. So it reset the entire orbit. Um, and this, as you could see, was a 50 minute orbit before it makes one complete circle. Anyway, I'm going to add a minute to this as well, just to keep things going here. This is going to, I'm going to add two minutes because it says acceleration too low. It means you need to go faster and add more time to your arrival time. If it says it's too high, uh, you need to take time off of your arrival time. So it says insufficient fuel in, in cells in your FTL drive. You need to add, you need to select a warp cell before you can go anywhere. You're going to select your warp cell. You're good. It says FTL drive ready, which means you can make this warp. You're free to make this warp. Uh, as long as it's not going through a planet, you won't die. And you will arrive at this destination three minutes and 40 seconds from now. It will activate your warp 30 seconds from now. I'm going to go ahead and tick this up. Um, and you ticking this up so I can demonstrate some things while we're doing this. Um, so this is 50 seconds now until I activate, and 3 minutes and 24 seconds until I arrive. I am not going through a planet. We are good. You're going to hit initialize. Now, you're going to go into your main ship screen by hitting F, and you're going to look for this M. The icon will give you the general direction that the M is in. You're going to have to, it's not always pointed directly at where the M is, but it's always, almost always generally in the direction of the M. You're searching for the M. You find the M. Oh, there it is. You're good. You're going to want to center that on your screen so that you have your target in the middle of that M, or, well, anywhere on the M, essentially. Now you're going to wait for your activation time to tick down. When your activation time is five seconds or lower, you're going to hit J, and this will start your FTL. It says press J to activate. The M will turn yellow. Confirm. We are now flying towards our destination faster than light. You can watch this on the nav screen if you would like. There's two minutes and 30 seconds until we arrive. And as you can see, we are slowly making our way over there. Not so slowly, actually. Um, we're currently moving, of course, faster than light, although there's currently a glitch in the game where your engines can actually make you go faster than FTL. But anyway. This is an alpha. There are plenty of bugs um, that need to be worked out, and that's fine. Um, as you can see, we are working our way up here. Um, we are currently, these numbers here are um, if you would like to make a custom orbit. So if instead of going to this supply post, I wanted to make a custom orbit, let's actually do this around a moon, just more clear about what's happening here. I don't know what this So. I have a custom orbit here around Burner. If you click on this little green icon, this is the point that you will be warping toward on the custom orbit. And if you want to change the size and shape of your custom orbit, you have to click this green icon until the orbit turns green. And now you have um, the option to tweak the orbit itself. This will change your vertical axis. So if I set it to 90 degrees, it will be 90 degrees from the axis of the moon itself, or planet, or whatever you're doing. This will change the, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Let's set this back to zero. So if you're looking straight up and down, I guess this will change uh, part of the orbit that it's swinging around. As you can see, it it, it, it tweaks. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but you can see it. I'm going to set that back to zero. This uh, does effectively the same, but at an angle, at a decline, or a, a Oh, perhaps not. Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, you can you can play around with these numbers and mess with them. Uh, I don't know exactly what these two do specifically besides swinging the orbit itself around. This will change the size of your orbit, of course. Uh, and these numbers are meaningful. I believe these are kilometers um, that you are from the center, or perhaps these are the circumference kilometers. I'm not really sure. Uh, specifically how far it is, but you can continue to, to widen this as far as you want, pretty much. Um, once you get to a certain point, you won't be able to widen it any further. Uh, right. 
eventually. All right, well, we came out of FTL. Let me go ahead and remake this uh, custom orbit around burner real quick. Uh, so I'm going to keep expanding this, expanding it. OK, now I can no longer expand it because I need to expand it in the other direction. Um, this is just makes Newtonian intuitive sense. Uh, at some point, you can't go any further because you'll swing back. Um, anyway, uh, and of course, this will change where your warp two point is on the moon itself, or on the orbit itself. So you can spin this all the way around. Um, if I wanted to warp to this area from here, I would use warp two because I'm moving between a moon. I will select a warp cell. And this spot, of course, impossible, of course, because my activation time is greater than my arrival time. So I'm going to tick that down, tick that up one. Acceleration too low, so I'm going to tick it up one more minute. Now my FTL drive is ready. I am not moving through that planet or that planet, so I'm good to go. And I can FTL here if I want. Uh, it's important to know, and you'll kind of figure this out as you get uh, more used to the game. Sometimes you can warp, use warp 3 between moons and planets. Sometimes when you're just moving around the planet, you can use warp 2, and it will actually save more energy, and it will get you there faster. However, in this case, it will not save me. Um, any energy, and it will not get me there any faster. Um, this is uh, just kind of the basics of your uh, FTL drive. Um, over here, around Bethir, I warped a place called, I believe it was Billion Resupply Outpost or something like that. Um, sometimes there's a glitch where it won't, oh, there it is, Emergency Supply Post. Yeah, all of these ship blah, 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 blah. These are all the modules that are attached to the emergency supply outpost. Uh, once I'm within 10 kilometers, those will all go away. It will only show emergency supply outpost. It's currently 14.4 kilometers away. Um, these red lines, uh, just like the docking screen, are going to show your vertical difference between uh, speeds of the object and of you. Um, so I'm going to make those as small as possible before I get going. I'm only moving 0.5 difference, which is fine. And I'm going to try and get this in the center. And I'm going to start moving to towards our objective. Um, a lot of times with new players, you will see them accelerate super far. Um, right now, I'm currently moving, as you can see, 60 meters per second, 60.8 meters per second. And it's going down you know, relatively slowly, because I'm not going that fast. However, uh, you're going to want to not go probably faster than 100 meters per second, as you're going to end up flying by it. Um, so I'm going 100 meters per second right now. When I get within 10 kilometers, it'll load it, so it'll take a second. Um, but you're going to definitely want to slow down. And as you can see, there's this blue icon in the middle. I'm going to wait until we're within uh, 10 kilometers so we don't have that loading icon. But this little blue this little blue bar in the middle of this little white bar, and the two white bars in, like on it, uh, when that turns red, and it'll change here in a second when we get within 10. There we go. All right, it's easier to see now. So if this blue bar turns red, it means that you are going too fast and you need to slow down. I'm going to go ahead and speed up here. Don't do this. Don't do this at home. This is not a good plan. Um, keep going, keep going, keep speeding up. All right, that little blue bar, that thing is red now. That means I'm going too fast. I need to slow down uh, relative to the station. This is just saying that if you're trying to slow down to stop at this station, you're going to need to slow the hell down before you get there because you're going way too fast to slow down in time right now. And of course, as you can see, I'm slowing down, but I'm slowing down, you know, not that fast. So it's important to make sure that you're not going too fast when you're coming up to these types of things. You're going to slow down, continue slowing down. I'm going to keep matching my horizontal velocity. Um, right now you can see it's not, the bars weren't that big, but that's because my icon wasn't aimed directly at the station itself, so I'm going to go ahead and match again. Oh, the little middle bar is red again, so I'm going to slow way the hell down. I'm within 700 meters, and once you're within a kilometer, you probably don't want to be going faster than maybe 50 meters per second, maybe 60. You'll get used to it the more you play the game. Um, I'm within 300 meters now, at 200 meters, 100 meters. I'm very close, and I'm just continually slowing down this time as I get closer. I'm now within 100 meters, and I'm going to slow all the way down to zero now because I'm close enough that I don't need to worry about it. Uh, when you're within one meter per second and your horizontal and vertical velocities are not huge, uh, you'll get this match velocity icon. If you hit M, 
I might need to match my bosses a little more. Them? Hello? What's going on here? All right, well, if you hit M usually, it will let you match your velocity. It's not letting me right now. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but if you want to match perfectly uh, your horizontal and, and all that, you hit M, it'll match your velocity. It'll stick you right next to the station, and it'll hold you there. Uh, of course, you can still float away slowly. Um, this is just due to, um, as you change orbits, uh, you know, I'm, you know, 59 meters away from the station itself, so as we're swinging around our orbit around Bethir, uh, it will slowly pull me just minuscule amounts further away from the station, uh, depending on the orbit, and over time that will build and build until it's 0.1 meters per second difference, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc. So if you wait, you know, hours and hours, even if you match velocity, you will be kilometers away from the station. Um, and that's important to remember when you're inside the station. Um, this is pretty much the same. Um, getting out as getting in, you're going to go in and out through the airlock, uh, depressurizing before you go out, repressurizing before you go in, of course. Um, and currently upside down, actually. And I'm not sure there's anything else I want to cover with this guide. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. I also stream every once in a while, and I'm happy to answer questions in there. That's Twitch TV slash Defensive LOL. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have a good day.